Uh, let's go to Peter Schiff because I can see him on the Skype literally uh, just turning red and laughing and but also getting angry. I mean, this is amazing. Then we'll go to Mr. Uh, Dent, harrydent.com, europack.com is Peter Schiff's site. Uh, wow, uh, Mr. Schiff, this is really wild. Yeah, no, this is a disgrace. I hadn't even heard about it until you were promoting this show, and I quickly went online and saw it, and I posted it on my, on my Facebook page. But, you know, the fact that President Obama is saying that, well, you have to look at communism and capitalism and choose what works, doesn't he know that nothing about communism works? It's a complete disgrace. It has destroyed the lives of millions and millions of people. Literally, many people's lives have been ended by communism, but it's impoverished hundreds of millions of people. The only thing that works is free market capitalism. And if the president of the United States can embrace that, especially in a country like Argentina, after just coming from Cuba, I mean, when can he embrace it? Well, you heard him say that communists don't really take your property. I mean, that's like saying that, you know, that bears don't go to the bathroom in the woods. I mean, this is the biggest lie I ever heard. Yeah, it's like, look, we can just have a little bit of communism. It's okay. Let's just use the good parts of communism. Yeah, what are those good parts? Please identify those good parts. There are no good parts. It's all bad. It's not like there's some baby that you don't want to throw out with the bathwater. It's all bathwater. We want free market capitalism. The freer, the better. And if you want to talk about morality, Capitalism, free market capitalism, without all this government, is the only moral economic system that exists. Absolutely. Um, this is so important, the death of our republic, that, that I've even been skipping breaks today because it's like a nuclear bomb went off or something in New York. I mean, I'm just actually staggering around right now uh, that it's getting so naked, and I wonder what's coming next. I, I also should introduce you guys, uh, Harry Dent. Obviously, HarryDent.com, we're about to go to him, author of The Demographic Cliff and editor of the free newsletter, Economy and Markets, a big turnaround specialist, of course, with Bank Capital previously. I'm not going to go through all of his Harvard Business School uh, degrees and the rest of it and some of the top companies he's run. Uh, and then, of course, uh, HarryDent.com is the website. And then, of course, Peter Schiff uh, has been on over the years even more than Mr. Dent. No stranger to this audience, but a lot of new listeners. He heads up billions in management uh, with Euro Pacific Capital, Europac.com. And he's an American businessman, investor, broker. His dad was a, uh, one of the top famous people exposing the IRS fraud and died as a political prisoner uh, just a few months ago, sadly. Um, and so Europac.com is his site. Um, let's go ahead and get uh, Mr. Dent's take on Obama's statements. And then I want to launch into where you both think uh, the economy is currently and what your latest uh, uh, projections are. And then maybe areas uh, you guys disagree on. Then we'll also take some calls. But Mr. Dent, good to have you with us as well. Yeah. Great to be back. And hi, Peter. Haven't seen you since uh, St. Kitts. Uh, I totally agree with the one statement he said about free market capitalism. It, 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 people don't realize in the late 1700s, free market capitalism met democracy. And they are actually opposite principles in a way where merit is totally uh, represented and rewarded, but everybody gets some say. So it trickles down. And, and we've had both of those. Uh, been killed in the last decade. Uh, the central banks have hijacked free market capitalism, totally set the markets with zero interest rates, which means there's no risk in total speculation. And, and I know Peter totally agrees with us on this. We got a, a casino economy here, but also democracy has been hijacked by special interests. People with zillions of dollars that can decide whether Mitt Romney runs or not. It's not whether you're in favor of Mitt Romney or not. It's the fact that the Koch brothers said, we veto him. And that 158, 158 families decided half the funding for all the primaries and stuff. So, so we have a, a failure of what has made us successful. And now I think this is where Peter and I totally agree. Free market capitalism and democracy to balance it out a bit has been the key to success for hundreds of years and why we're so wealthy and why China is not and Russia is not. And now we're killing the golden yeah. goose. It's insanity. Killing the golden goose. Yeah. Look, look, look. I actually, you know, I actually disagree with one point on democracy because uh, the, the problem that you're talking about is an inherent flaw 
in democracy. The founding fathers recognized that. They called them factions. And they wanted to protect us from the evils of democracy by installing an American republic with a lot of safeguards against democracy. And the problem isn't that we don't have enough democracy. We now have too much of it because those safeguards have been whittled away over the years by a Supreme Court that doesn't enforce the Constitution. Yeah, sure. I think you saying special interests then manipulate the Democratic vote in our Democratic Republic. But, but I mean, I think we're basically debating different levels of this. What would you call the real world system coming in where the top 10 corporations or so want a monopoly, they, they control governments, they are now promoting socialism to domesticate the general public, to make them dependent, to secure their monopolies. What yeah. do we do when David Rockefeller is promoting Mao Zedong in the New York Times op-ed pieces? I mean, why, why do we see ultra mega rich so many times yeah, well, in history, to both of you, a, a first shift, uh, uh, financing and working with collectivism? Well, you know, what we have now is a, a form of socialism, fascism. That's basically what we have. I mean, we have, you can call it corporatism or crony capitalism, but fascism really describes it. You go back and look at uh, Mussolini, uh, Italy under Mussolini, or even look at Nazi Germany, take, about, take away the concentration camps and the racism. But if you look at the economic parts of that, of what fascism was, that's really what we've devolved into. You know, and people who think that fascism is the opposite of communism, no, it's not. You know, they're both forms of socialism. Sure. Communism is more extreme than fascism, but I don't want either one. To the opposite end is freedom. I guess the extreme opposite is anarchy. I don't want to go that far. I want to go as close to anarchy as possible. That's right. But still have a government. That's that, what that the is dead on, Peter Schiff. What What is your view, uh, Mr. Dent, on what he just said? And, and what would you call this global system? And then adding to that, what would you call China? They call it one party rule, uh, communist capitalism. What is it really? Okay. Here's the difference between communism and socialism. Socialism tries to include more people and, and provide a safety net, which up to a minor degree makes sense to me. It's like having insurance, like all of us have insurance. But when it comes to where anybody can get anything and there's no incentive to work, obviously it's not good. Communism is different. Communism is top-down <laughs> management of the economy, which is the worst possible thing because it, it gives the power to the political elite and the people who kiss their ass, pardon my French here. Um, and that's what China is, and that's what Russia was, and Russia already failed. Russia tried to compete with the United States in the Cold War and failed because their economy failed. They put 10 times what we did in their military, still couldn't keep up with us, because free market capitalism works better. And again, democracy to me, provides that a, a bit of a balance, which is necessary, which I hate to say it, is kind of like socialism. Everybody has a vote and everybody has to do pretty well if the system is gonna work, unlike before democracy, but it is capitalism that drives innovation, drives uh, and, and reinvest money in, in the best areas, and, and governments have stopped that. There's no reinvestment. Sure, they want they want monopoly. So let me ask, shift this and then back to you. Currently, what would you call the U.S. government versus the Chinese government? Where do you think we're going? And obviously, they now admit, both of you have been proven right, that the Federal Reserve raising rates even a tiny bit didn't work, that they would then stop. They're talking about cutting them. Other countries are. What's the real state of the world? Both of you say we're going to hell in a handbasket, you know, three, four, five years ago when the media says we were doing great. You've been proven right. So what's coming next? Well, well yeah, first of all, Go, go ahead, Peter. Yeah, well, first of all, with respect to, you know, to China, I mean, you don't have to have a vote to be free, right? I mean, my vote is canceled out. It doesn't even matter who I vote for, because the guy I vote for is going to lose. So the fact that I can vote doesn't mean I'm free. What's important to me is economic freedom. And actually, in China, there's a lot more of that now, unfortunately, than there is in the United States. So just because you can't vote doesn't mean you don't have a lot of freedom. And just because we can vote, you know, it doesn't mean we're free. You know, the, the Russians could always vote. You can always choose which communists you wanted to vote for. So voting is overrated in most cases. But getting back to the uh, the economy, one thing I agree with Harry about completely is that the economy is a disaster. All this talk about the recovery, it's President Obama who's peddling fiction, not not Harry and I. The economy is a mess thanks to the federal well, Wait a minute, he said a few months Congress. ago we have the best economy in U.S. history. <laughs> Yeah, well, he doesn't know anything about U.S. history. We, he's proven that again today. But th he doesn't know that communism doesn't work. So you can't believe anything that the president says. But the only thing that where I disagree with Harry is what does all this mean for the value of the dollar and for the price of gold? 
because Harry believes the U.S. economy is going to fall apart and that's going to benefit the dollar and the price of gold is going to go down. I think when the U.S. economy falls apart, the dollar is falling apart with it. And I think gold is going to go up. So we, we, we agree on the problem. We just yeah. disagree on one aspect of what's going to happen as a result of the problem. And it's an important aspect if you're an investor. Yeah, it is important, um, Alex. And, and, and I just look at the evidence. Since the crisis started in January of 2008, that's when we officially entered the, the great financial crisis before governments turn it around with zillions of dollars of stimulus just to, to erase everything and cover it over. The dollar has gone up. It went up in the downturn. Gold went down in the second half of 2008, largely because of the rise of the dollar. But, but, but the markets were telling you the dollar was the safe haven, the best house in a bad neighborhood, not gold, because gold is a part of the commodity complex that went up in the early 2000s into 2008 to 2011 and has been crashing faster than any other bubble. We're in a series yeah. of bubbles that are all crashing, and gold is part of it. The, yeah, let me let me address let me address an important Inter distinction here. So this is important. So when the 2008 financial crisis hit, the dollar was at an all-time record low going into that crisis. And when the crisis started, the reason the dollar rose is because people didn't know what was going to happen. They thought banks were going to fail. They thought all these dollars were going to disappear. They didn't realize that there was going to be bailouts in QE1. And the minute the government bailed everything out, the dollar tanked. And the dollar didn't only start to rise until people believed the Fed had successfully saved the economy and that we were out of trouble. That's when gold started to decline. It was because everybody had confidence that we now had a sound economy and what the government did work. Once this <laughs> next burst, <laughs> this is where I have a problem. Let me, let me Hold on a minute. Let's let, let's let, no. uh, let's let uh, no. uh, Harry respond. The dollar went up in the second half of 2008 when the financial institutions and Lehman Brothers was going down. It went That's up. because, You're Harry, that. that was my point. That's because people thought that all these banks were gonna fail. The minute the government bailed everybody out and showed that no, everybody was too big to fail, the minute that happened, the dollar reversed on a dime and tanked. Okay, and let, me, let me have each of you then, down. let me do this, let me do this. Uh, still up 40% over where it was Let me do this. There. Three people yelling at each other over satellite kind of messes stuff up, but with Skype, it kind of turns into a big echo chamber. So just hold on just a minute. We have a long segment coming up. I want to give each of you, you know, three, four minutes on your view on gold, because this is kind of the debate segment where you guys disagree somewhat uh, on the other side so that uh, Dent gets, you know, two or three minutes, you get two or three minutes, and then back and forth, because I really want to hear both your views. And I know the audience does. We all respect each other. This is really important. Now, now I'll say this. Dent, you were right that gold would start really going down the last few years, but then you said you wouldn't expect it would go back up too much. It has been going back up some. You say it's uh, not a commodity. Uh, I guess uh, Schiff says it is. I really want to get both your views on this. Uh, so you go ahead, uh, Dent, for the next minute and a half or so, then we'll come back, let you finish up, and then go to Schiff. Okay. Gold correlates with inflation. It's the best inflation hedge in all of history. That's why it was such a great investment in the crisis of the 70s, which was an inflationary recession, which I call the summer season in my four-stage model over a lifetime. Gold does not do well in deflation, and it is part of the commodity cycle that goes up and down every 30 years like a clock. Gold peaked in 1980, crashed into 1998 to 2001, bubbled, 7.7 .7 times in 10 years into 2011 and is crashing. It's a bubble bursting. It will have long-term prospects when we get inflation again, but inflation is not in the cards because governments and central banks are doing one thing and one thing only. They are printing massive amounts of money to prevent deflation. Okay, stay there. Come back. I'll give you a minute more, and I want to ask the question, though. Why is gold starting to go back up again a little bit? I, I want to get your view on that. We'll go for like three minutes. Uh, back to Peter Schiff. Peter Schiff, of course, is Zeropack.com. Harry Dent is HarryDent.com. I'm Alex Jones, and you are watching and listening and reading Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, becoming one of the true news leaders in the world. You know, on Monday, I'm going to spend at least an hour and a half taking calls from people that have been the victims of communism and collectivism. We'll also open the phones up if you love it. I've done this probably 15, 20 times in my 21 years on air. I've never had anybody call in who lived under communism that supported it. It was always some weird academic or some college student who wanted something free. And these people really are sheltered and, and, and wearing new designer clothes, driving nice cars. 
with, with expensive iPhones. I've seen co communist rallies in Austin now. There's red flags popping up all over the country. It's really sexy again. And I've seen them pull up in brand new Jaguars. I mean, new $100,000 Jaguars. But it kind of makes sense. They want to run and manage it and be the inner party members. And they're just dreaming of arresting libertarians and conservatives. I mean, I'm not kidding. So we're going to go back uh, to our guests. We're going to open the phones up. Uh, but I'm going to get the numbers of folks for some of these other callers want to come on Monday since they're calling in from all over the world, uh, from Pakistan, Romania, you name it, uh, people that lived in Russia, Bosnia. I want to talk to you guys on Monday, but I'm still going to go back to Liberty Monk later to finish his China story because it was so, so informative about how they had no culture. Chinese culture had been outlawed when he was over there as a student. All they know is worshiping Mao Zedong. I mean, it's wild. But before we go any further, we are listener-supported. Uh, we don't come with a gun like the IRS and then give $450 million a year to NPR, who then begs for money every week or sells you $100 coffee cups, you know, with your donation to spew, you know, let's shut all our power plants off. That'll make us prosperous garbage. No, we sell high-quality products. Hillary for prison shirts to, to promote, you know, going after that crook. Uh, Molon Labe t-shirts, high-quality non-GMO uh, heirloom seed banks. Spring is here. The nutraceuticals are the very best out there. And you, you heard a caller earlier, man, I wish I'd have gotten super male vitality before. You're not playing around. Just get a bottle of it. You're supporting the broadcast and free market capitalism and folks that promote your Second Amendment and your private property. You need to invest in liberty, period, to not be overrun. And I know you know that, but most people are deficient with real iodine. You can't get real clean iodine. We went and got it. It isn't like the regular iodine that eats a hole in your stomach. It's totally different, major game changer. Just like if you don't have enough vitamin C, you get scurvy. Same thing if you don't have the good halogen. And fluoride's the bad halogen and absolutely fries your glands. This is the answer. It doesn't just block these different radioactive isotopes when a nuke plant blows up. And different types of radioactive iodine. That's one reason people take it. That's not why I take it. There's not a lot of that out there in most areas. It's other stuff it blocks going into your thyroid too. This is what it runs off of, folks. This, is, this gives me more energy every day than three cups of coffee. I've lost weight. It's incredible. It is a game changer. Survival Shield X2, InfoWarsLife.com. Just type into Google. Iodine being added to salt boosted IQs 15 points or more in the U.S. And then the feds took it out of the salt. Oh, we don't want that. They're, they're getting too smart. I mean, it's that simple. We have big specials running on a bunch of the other nutraceuticals, InfoWarsLife.com. The liver cleanse, the deep cleanse, zeolite shilogy, all of it. Go watch the informational videos. Read the information. I can actually say with DNA Force, but it's sold out. Whole bunch of patents, certified. We can actually say it's known to regrow nerves and, and do stuff with telomeres and the rest of it. I mean, we've got nutraceuticals, folks. The highest quality, InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or 888-253-3139. And our latest male enhancement... It also works on females, by the way, probably even more. Anthroplex, but our market's men, so it's for men. Uh, for some reason, men don't want you to tell you it's for women, too. So, oh, it's just for men. There, I'll say whatever you want. Uh, now, let's go back to Peter Schiff. I've been ranting. That was a short segment. I want to have him be able to counter in just a moment. But finishing up, uh, Harry Dent, harrydent.com, with your view on gold and where it's going. Go ahead. Uh, do we have uh, Harry Dent there, guys? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, I thought you were going to Peter. Uh, look, gold bubbled up along with the entire commodity complex from 2001 into 2008 to 2011 in April, late April 2011, at the day silver topped at 48 bucks. We said this is the time to get out of gold and silver. It's going to crash. Go to go to the next chart I have on gold. Uh, gold was a bubble, and now gold is bursting. It went sideways after September 2011 for a couple of years and then broke a key resistance area at $1,525. We were telling our newsletter subscribers, it breaks $1,525, it is toast. This bubble is over and it went down to $1,180 almost immediately and then bottomed at $1,050 and is bouncing. This is a bear market bounce. I've been calling for this more than anybody for the last several months. Gold is way oversold and is due to bounce to $1,300 minimum and maybe as high as $1,400. Okay, now. okay. I'm going to let you come back in a moment. And, and I am sorry. I was about to go to shift, and I realized I was, you had another minute. Uh, Peter, I think you've got about four minutes here just to be even. Go ahead. All right, so let me reiterate this point now with gold. So 
Gold went from under $300 an ounce in 2000 to a high of 1,000 on the eve of the 08 financial crisis. Now, when that crisis hit, nobody knew what was going to happen. People thought banks were going to fail. Depositors were going to lose their money. Uh, people, had, people were selling everything, including gold. And gold went down below 700 but then when the government came out with bailouts and 0% interest rates and quantitative easing, gold took off and it went to almost $1,900 an ounce over the next few years. Now, the reason that gold has declined from that point, other than the fact that it got overbought and you had a lot of speculators who came rushing in, is because everybody believed falsely that what the Fed did worked, that the crisis was over and everything was great. Now, here we are today in 2016, gold is above 1,200. It's still 20% higher than it was at its peak before the 2008 crisis. But I think what's gonna happen over the next several years, and even this year, is people are gonna realize that what the Fed did didn't work, it backfired. We're in a worse shape than we were before the financial crisis. I think the Fed is going back to zero. I think they're going for QE4. And I think the dollar is gonna tank and gold is gonna take off. And Harry said so himself, that gold doesn't go up in deflation, it goes up in inflation. And we're gonna have inflation. The federal government, the Federal Reserve is not gonna allow the other bubbles to deflate. They're gonna print way too much money. They're not gonna default on their US Treasury debt. They're not gonna default on their Social Security commitments. They're gonna pay all this with printing press money. And so prices are gonna go up. The price of gold is gonna skyrocket. The only deflation you're gonna see is in terms of gold. And if Harry is, is still saying not to buy gold, I don't know when he's going to turn around. If it goes to 1500 or 1600 at what point is he going to turn bullish and start advising people to buy? Because I think it's very risky if you think that this economy is going to implode the way he thinks it's going to implode. And you think the safe haven is going to be the one currency that we can print into oblivion, that somehow the dollar is going to collapse, and the dollar, I mean, the U.S. economy is going to collapse and the dollar is going to reign supreme, that makes no sense to me. And that is a very risky bet that I would not want to make. Okay. You used about three and a half of your minutes there. I want to go back to Den. Again, it's not a debate. It's a friendly discussion. But you guys are on all these big TV shows where they are vicious debates. And that's fine because the problem is you tune in, though. They're usually debating a bunch of disinformation just so it doesn't <laughs> matter. Out of everything you're saying, I, I find myself agreeing with both of you because it's true that if they're printing all this money, issuing all this currency – that we should be seeing devaluation in currency, we should be seeing uh, commodities increase, but because of the demographic cliff, we are seeing a lot of depressionary things like in oil and other areas, but then I think about what Schiff has been warning of, you watch, they're gonna start dumping treasuries and dollars, that now started accelerating in the last month. Uh, you also have all these cultures like the Chinese, the Indians and others that have intrinsic value in gold, they're only accelerating their buying, I see other institutions hedging bets buying gold. So that's why, Mr. Dent, I don't know which one of you uh, is right. Uh, because you guys, I guess, fundamentally disagree on deflation and inflation. You think deflation. That's what Harry Dent thinks. Uh, and then, of course, Peter Schiff thinks, no, inflation. So I, I guess we're segueing into a debate about that. Well, uh, Alex, first of all, every major debt bubble in history which also creates financial asset bubbles and stocks and real estate and commodities, whatever, has been followed by deflation. Everyone, the 1930s was deflation after the roaring 20s bubble. And debt but we bubble. were on a gold standard back then. It was deflation in terms of gold. The Fed couldn't just print money at will. Look, yeah, look we're, the president, Harry, the president was in Argentina. The president is in Argentina today. Look what happened in Argentina. They didn't have deflation when that system collapsed. They had massive inflation. They had hyperinflation. Country like Zimbabwe, we're not that. And we're no, the, I'm not saying Zimbabwe. I'm saying Argentina, Harry. Argentina. Argentina Wasn't Argentina was, more similar to us, though, of anywhere in Latin America? Argentina, uh, Argentina was the fourth wealthiest country in the world at the beginning of the 19th century. It was a major industrial country, and it was destroyed. It was ravaged, and they had hyperinflation. They didn't go to deflation first. The, the, you can't look at the 1930s and say what happened then is going to happen now. This is a completely different economy with a completely different monetary system. And we have a lot more in common with Argentina than we do with ourselves during that time period. No, we don't. You refuse to look at the fact we have already printed more money than any time in history among all the major countries. And we have how much inflation? Zero. Zero. <laughs>
not, Hold on, you guys don't get into deflation. it. You don't understand deflation. When bubbles burst, financial assets collapse, debts fail, and that destroys money and less money chasing the same goods equals deflation. End of story. No exceptions Look. in history except for Banana Republic. In a few weird circumstances. Okay, uh, listen, uh, uh, I thought I'd get mad, but Harry, please don't have an embolism, brother. We love you. No, nah, this is crazy. The facts are no. the facts. If we were going to have hyperinflation from unprecedented money printing, six years later, we would have seen it by now. Okay, so you're saying there's no amount of money printing that would cause inflation? Because, I, I mean, I see real inflation no, in some can't. goods. If you get keep printing money because and the economy fails anyway, you can't keep printing money. Hold on, hold on, hold on just a second. Let's... Just take a breather in, in the corner for just a moment, you know, a ding, ding on the bell. Just for a moment, Peter, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, first of all, you can't say there's no inflation and, and ignore what happens in financial markets, ignore what happens in real estate markets. That's the effect of inflation. You can't ignore the fact that prices should have fallen. Consumer prices should have come down, and instead they went up. So there's a lot of inflation there. And also the numbers that the governments use to measure inflation are not accurate. They have been deliberately engineered to paint a rosier picture of inflation than that's actually well, there. Well, obviously that's part of it, Peter. But, but I mean, is it there? What about oil? I mean, there's inflation and home prices and mortgages, which is the largest single cost of the average American family. Smart. They don't measure that accurately. What about oil? Yeah, oil. Remember, oil prices went down because the dollar went up. If you look at where oil was and in the gold, late 1980s, too, Peter, it was below, too. hold on, Harry. Oil was below $20 a barrel in, in uh, 2000, 1999, 2000. And it went from $20 a barrel to $150 a barrel when the dollar tanked for seven years. The reason oil prices went back down is because not only did the dollar rise, but everybody believed that it would keep rising because they believed the Fed would raise interest rates in a growing U.S. Okay, economy. Okay, let me go back to Dan for just a moment here, and then I want to shift here to another subject. Uh, and Mr. Dan, I don't, I don't say this to be bossy because I, I like people yelling. It's, it's you know, good radio and gets people thinking. Uh, but when you yell too much, it's overpowering your mic, and we can't understand you. It's so loud. It's just the audio is cutting out. Um, restate what you were trying to say a moment ago, and then here's my question. You both predicted that QE wouldn't work, and you guys agree on more than you disagree. There's a yeah. fundamentals on this inflation, deflation issue. Where do you guys think we're going now? What's the Fed going to do? How bad is it going to get? Again, to me, what happens, central banks keep around the world doubling down, doubling down, especially Japan and Europe now, not the U.S., and that's why our stock market's going nowhere for a while. They have to do this because if they have to keep the bubble going because when a bubble bursts, and this is the greatest bubble in modern history, and we don't we don't have anything to compare to China on this. And I'm sure Peter would Peter would agree on this. China is the greatest bubble I've ever seen, studying hundreds of years of history, and it's top down central planning, communist government, which has overbuilt everything, and it's going to burst. And when that bursts, there's no amount of money the Federal Reserve or the ECB can print to combat how that will shock, send shockwaves around the world. So all I know, and I know this 100%, major debt bubbles also cause asset bubbles, and they will burst at some point. Well, the media, the media is telling us now, okay, things are getting bad, but, but I mean, aren't we already in the middle of a big bubble burst, or what is the big bubble burst? I, I, I think it's starting. We've seen three bubbles, uh, 2000, 2007, and now 2015 top. Uh, we may get a slight new high in the U.S. if they really crank up the printing presses again. But again, what you have to realize is gold did see, as Peter said, its greatest gains after the 2008 crisis, where it did go down 33 percent and silver 50 percent, because the assumption was with massive money printing, we would get inflation. Gold correlates with inflation. Okay, let's go back to Peter. Back to the Peter, instead of you guys debating this, because time's going to tell. We're going to find out who's right here, obviously. Unfortunately, I wish you know, we weren't going down this road. What is the real state of the economy? What do you think the next shoot a drop is, Peter Schiff? Well, well, I think the state of the economy is a disaster. I think we have a much bigger bubble in China. In fact, I'm, I, I think there's more opportunity than, than, than pitfalls in China. But what I would say is this. Even if Harry is right about what's going to happen to the price of gold, and I don't think he's right. You know, timing is difficult. I mean, the Dow never made it to 36,000. So sometimes things that you think are going to happen don't happen. But even if Harry is right and the price of gold goes down, the price of real estate is going down more. The price of stocks is going down more. The price of everything else is going to go down more. So if you have your money in gold and the price of gold falls, you're still going to be richer than almost everybody else on the planet. 
So you know what? It doesn't matter because what matters is your relative purchasing power. So if you have gold and it prices drop and for some reason everybody piles into the dollar, okay, you're not as good, you're not as well off as if you were in dollars, but you're better off than the people in real estate and stocks. But if I'm right and the dollar tanks and you follow Harry's advice, you're broke. You've got nothing. Well, let me you're ask you this the question then, market. Peter. What is the real state of the dollar right now? Because I know actually as the world economy gets worse, people tend to run to it to prop it up as safe haven is the you know, best worst house in the neighborhood, as you say, uh, or the best house in a bad neighborhood. But at a certain point, I mean, can the dollar just go on forever? Or how do you see the no, dollar it, getting it, in trouble? It, it can't go on forever. Just like the real estate bubble couldn't go on forever or the dot-com bubble couldn't go on forever. Nothing that can't go on forever will. And this is a gigantic bubble. We have conned the world into supplying us with merchandise in exchange for money that we create out of nothing with no real sure. value. We've been able to borrow all this money. We have no ability to ever repay it. In fact, if interest rates go up, we can't even service the debt, let alone retire it. It's all gonna be inflated away and the dollar's gonna tank and with it is gonna sure. go the standard of living of, of America because we've, we've basically decimated our industrial production. That is the problem. We're living on credit, on, on printed money, and this is coming to an end. And I think if you We're want to protect to yourself with that, you, you, you need to be in gold and other assets. Harry, what about this point? You talk about demographic cliffs, you talk about cycles. Hasn't gold pretty much forever been seen as a commodity of value, a store of wealth? I mean, I know you think it's not a commodity, but I mean, the elites always keep a piece of it as a hedge, or are you saying gold's just going out? It also ha has industrial uses. I'm not propping gold up here. I'm just trying to understand your view. No, I do see gold as a commodity largely. It's no longer a monetary metal after the early 70s, and everybody thinks it is. The, the, the total gold in the world would fit an Olympic-sized swimming pool. How could it possibly back the global growth in an information world that has nothing to do with commodities? Sure, well, wouldn't it be fractional it, it then? Wouldn't it just the be a fractional? Yeah, you know, you it, know, you have have a the fact that it's scarce is why it's valuable. Microscope to measure your gold holdings, to trade it. And anybody want to take a Krugerrand down to the 7-Eleven and try to buy a loaf of bread? Uh, stay there, stay there. Let's come back. I'm going five minutes to the next hour with our guest. So we can take a few calls. 800 259 9231. Specific questions, quick questions, or comments for both our guests. 800 259 9231. We're about to go back to Liberty in New Hampshire. I cut off earlier. I wanted to tell us his brief um, you know, communist story uh, about uh, living in China. He was getting some of it. It was pretty amazing how they tell you what to think and how to dress and what to do. That's the real. Uh, oppression and to see the left pushing for it is so sick but man i did not expect you guys to get this heated today uh what i do know is you guys agree on so much more than you disagree and you've been right about the fact that our economy is going downhill how bad in just a minute from each of you how bad do you really think it's going to get and what's the time frame because they're now admitting that much of the world's in a depression uh that we're like an island but the the water is rising uh let's go uh, back to mr dent and get his take on that harry dent well, you know, I have this Dow megaphone pattern, most obvious pattern I've ever seen, similar to the late 60s and the early to mid 70s crash, three higher highs with three lower lows. I'm projecting the Dow is going to hit 5,500 by, or maybe 6,000 at the best, by mid to late 2017, probably late 2017. I think gold's going to go down to 700 to 750, just ahead of that. And then I think, and I would then I think the dollar is going to have some problems. And then I think gold could have some uh, better long-term upside. But I, I see a major crisis, but I see the dollar going up to 120 on the dollar index. It's at 96 now. And it has it is up like 35% since the beginning of the 2008 crisis. So it, like gold, it's higher. And I agree with Peter that if I had a choice between buying gold versus real estate or stocks, I'd buy gold because it's already been pummeled, but I still see it as a declining asset along with commodities sure. until this whole cycle turns around years well, from Well, we're definitely going to find out. Uh, let's go ahead and back to uh, Peter Schiff. Uh, Peter? Yeah, again, you know, timing is always difficult. Harry, I remember not too long ago, I think you were looking for Dow 1000, so you've upped your target, but, you know, no, I, I don't I know that we're going to... I never said Dow 1000. Sorry, Peter. Oh. You missed Oh, more what, facts than anybody have ever. Right, well, what, what, yeah, well, you used to have a lower, you used to have a much lower target, but, 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 but my point is. 3,000 to 4,000 as a potential years from now. Right, let, let me, let me, let, 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 I let remember me get 4, back 000, to my point. Go ahead. Yeah. But anyway, look, the fact that you can fit all the gold into a swimming pool doesn't mean it can't be the basis of a monetary system. The gold standard works just because we're more complex today in our innovation or our gadgets.
doesn't mean it doesn't work. In fact, a gold standard could work today even better than it worked in the past because of our technology. Yes, you can take your gold into, in, into a store and, and, and buy trinkets. You can buy a cup of coffee with it. Look, I've got credit card backed by gold, debit card backed by gold. Look at what Big Gold is doing. You, you, this is the easiest right. time. It's never been easier to be on a gold All standard. Right. And individuals can adopt their own gold standard. They don't have to wait for the government to do it. But ultimately, we will go back on a gold standard, and it's going to work. Because what we got now, a fiat system, does not work. All right, uh, Peter, hold on, hold on. We're going to come back with five more minutes and, and, and then let you finish uh, there. Um, uh, Mr. Dent and Mr. Schiff, but I want to go to, to Liberty Monk also in the next segment to talk about communism and kind of end it where we where we started. But real fast, just a quick question. Sherry in Texas wants to talk about listening on 104.9 FM. Not sure what station. We have so many affiliates, uh, but thank you for tuning in, uh, Sherry. You have a question about Social Security. Go ahead. Thank you, Alex. Listen, um, the Social Security benefits will be decreased probably around 2019, 2020, and I know that because when I got my benefits, I asked the Social Security office, when all those baby boomers that are taking their benefits early uh, amortize out, when they spend all that upfront money, will all our benefits at this time decrease? Yeah, that's you know, a great question. Uh, real fast, 20 seconds each of you. Uh, Peter, where do you think Social Security is going? Well, look, I don't think they have the integrity to cut the benefits, so they're going to inflate them away. That's the problem. We can't afford to pay. It's a gigantic Ponzi scheme, and they're going to resort to a printing press. And there's all this inflation. It's not just Social right, let's Security. Let's go to Harry Dent real quick. Pay, Harry, they can't pay anything. Social Security, in, will they just inflate it? In this economic it? crisis and the next two administrations, we're going to finally realize we have to retire at 72 to 75 instead of 62 to 65, and that's going to restructure benefits. We can't even remotely afford what's been promised. All right, stay there. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll be back. 70 seconds. All right, I want to go real fast with these callers because I want to go back to Liberty Monk. But real quick question. HB, I guess, listening in Knoxville, Tennessee on WBCR uh, 1470 uh, is calling in. And HB, you have a question about the Rothschilds and gold. Go ahead. Yeah, I thought the Rothschilds set the price of gold like every day or something like that. In London, and back in the 1800s, uh, they pretty much controlled it. I don't, I don't think that's gone on for a long time. Let me ask the gold bug here, Peter Schiff. Peter, uh, what's, uh, what's your uh, info on the lore of the Rothschilds? I don't think it has any influence or any effect on the markets. There's a lot of conspiracy theories out there. You know, some of it is anti-Semitism, too, uh, as if uh, Jewish people somehow control the markets or control the banks to suppress the price of gold. But look, the price of gold is going to go up for one reason and one reason only. That's because politicians and central bankers keep printing money. They have screwed these economies up. They've been trying to buy votes with promises that taxpayers can't keep. And they've got all they've got many economies in a lot of sure. trouble. Separately, though, price. haven't some of the big banks that are competing with gold, haven't they been caught trying to manipulate the price of gold down, though? Well, they, look, banks manipulate everything. They, they, they manip the government manipulates the bond market far more than anybody tries to manipulate the gold well, market. Well, sure, they admit but that now. I mean, they admit, I mean yeah, 10 years but, ago, you guys right. would talk about it. They say it didn't. Now they admit it. But but gold is like right, a canary in a, in a monetary cake, you know, a, coal, a coal mine. And yes, central bankers don't want the price of gold to go up because it, it's a repudiation of what they're doing. They want us in their fiat. They don't want us in real money. All right, let's, get, let's get Harry Dent's comp response. Competition is going to win in favor of gold. Harry Dent of HarryDent.com, what, what's your take on manipulation of gold prices? Well, no, I don't think there's that much. I think it's a market thing. And again, gold prices went up at first after 2008, after crashing, because everybody assumed, and naturally, if they're going to print unprecedented amounts of money, we're going to get inflation and even hyperinflation. My case has been six years has proven no matter how much money you print, you don't get substantial inflation. And when this bubble finally bursts, there will not be enough money to print. Right now, there's $250 trillion in financial assets and debt around the world. A hundred trillion of that, if the 30s is any guy, will deflate. Destroy money beyond, so they have to print a hundred trillion dollars instead of twelve trillion. Right. Prevent you guys are leaving me in two minutes. You guys are leaving me in two minutes. Shakari Jackson's coming up to host the rest of the hour. I'm going to come back and finish that call after you guys are gone with Liberty Monk and then hand the baton to Jakari with all the powerful info he's got coming up. And then we'll be back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. with the Sunday broadcast. It's going to be taped this Sunday because of Easter. But I want to just ask both of you in closing, and thank you both for coming on. Uh, Harry Dent of HarryDent.com, Peter Schiff, Europac.com as well. Uh, when you, in your gut, because you guys are pretty accurate on this, what you think the next trigger could be to clearly make it 
seen that we're going down the tubes because even mainstream media now has finally stopped the mantra that everything's wonderful, everything's fine. Only Obama is still saying that. Well, you know, I think it's I think it might be the Fed having to acknowledge that things are not as rosy uh, as 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 they've been. As well, they just did claiming. that this week. They just came out Monday. Yeah, well, but now they're they're already trying to backtrack on that a little bit. But I would suggest that one thing to throw out there to Harry that it's you, it, put, pick a point because let's assume the price of gold keeps going up. When do you when do you acknowledge that fact? Because you don't want to go down with a sinking ship. If if the dollar is going to collapse, and I'm right. You don't want to go down with that ship and have no gold and only dollars. So at what point, where does it, where does gold have to rise before you might reverse and say, you know what, it's not going down, it's going up, so let's buy it? Yeah, it'd have to get above $1,525. I'm crystal clear on that, and I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, but, but please answer my question. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, what's the next big trigger, or what are you watching? Because you really called it about a year ago. You, you said, like, two weeks this will happen, and three months that will happen. That was pretty scary. we got 30 seconds. What do you think is going to happen? Okay. Oil. We predicted oil would be down to twenty to ten dollars in the coming years. It's already hit twenty-five. Oil going down kills the fracker. China, their real estate bubble. The stock bubble is one thing, but all the money in China is in real estate. That bubble keeps bursting. Uh, we're toast. Sure, and could an overdue earthquake on the West Coast do something? I mean, who knows what it could be, right, uh, Peter? Or yeah, third thing, Italy yeah. is going to be deep trouble by the end of this year, and that's going to kill the eurozone. All right. we're still that's how well, at least I know well, please now. come hey. back. Please, you'll both be back, and we'll we'll see who's right coming up. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Have a great weekend. We'll be back with the fourth hour. Stay with us.